It's a long time and it's uh, a long journey. Learn those hard lessons. And that's what creates champion. When you turn up, when no one else believes in you but yourself. A few years down the track, and I've gone on to get on a three fight win streak against the best guys in the world. When I'm in there, I've got to respect everything that I put into this. He's trying to take away everything that I want, and that's to be the world champion. Dave Blakamoto here with the future UFC flyweight champion, Kai Kara Franz. How are you, champ? Hey, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm feeling like the world champ. I've been feeling like this for the last few years and I'm just ready to go do it. Last time we spoke, it was just before your title shot eliminator with Askar Askarov and everything went to plan. Talk to me about it. Yeah, so my last fight, um... Another fight where I was overlooked. Even my opponent was looking past me, looking at the title and, and calling everyone out, saying once I get past this guy, I'm fighting this guy. And it's like, bro, you got to fight in front of you. Focus on that. But that's the story of my life. I've always been the underdog. I've always been overlooked, underestimated. And that's the worst thing you can do. You know, fighting a Russian that's undefeated, never lost. And I went out there and out wrestled him neutralized everything, got out of sticky situations and then put it on him. And um, pretty unanimously um, won that fight. For the winner, by unanimous decision, that, That's what it's all about, to find the odds when um, the pressure's on you, you just go out there and, and shine. Do you look back and, and reflect a lot? Not only on how far you've come, but how far the gym as a whole has come in the last five years. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's important to reflect and, and look how far you've come, but that just sets you up for the next goal. So for 10 years, I wrote on my diary, make my UFC debut. For 10 years, I had to keep writing that. Every year, I had to rewrite that on the list because I couldn't take it off. And to 2018, when I took that off, I just had to keep picking at it, keep chipping away at it, and eventually, once I got my foot in the door in the UFC, it's, it's ironic, but now that's where the hard work starts because every fight, you're fighting the best in the world. So with that being said, what's prepared me is obviously this gym, City Kickboxing. This is a family. Eugene, what he's created and the rest of the coaches he's brought on board and the fight team that we have here, um, you just thrive in it. If you have the right attitude and you're just willing to work hard, you're going to be successful. I'm just a product of my environment and I'm surrounded by world champions day in and day out at the city kickboxing. That's the pursuit I'm on. How does it feel to get your shot at UFC Gold 12 years after you made your pro debut? It's a long time and it's uh, a long journey. I haven't taken any shortcuts and I feel like that's why I'm, I am where I am. I've learned those hard lessons, coming off losses, picking myself back up, running it back. And that's what creates champions when you, when you turn up, when, when um, no one else believes in you but yourself and, and you just keep turning up. And that's the, pretty much just the theme here where I just kept turning up, no excuses. And the last few years, you've really seen me kind of all put it into play. And, um, it's all aligning. The first step is just turning up, walking through those doors into the gym, and that's where the, the foundation's built. So for 12 years, you know, I've been on this journey and, and um, never counting myself out. Like I said before, when everyone's overlooking you and underestimating you, you, you just keep turning up. And now you're starting to see that in the, in the ring where I actually do believe I'm the best in the world. And when I walk out there into the crowd in front of 30,000 people, I'm going into hostile territory. I know Texas is on the border of Mexico and Brandon Moreno is the poster boy for Mexico. I love going into memory territory and just feeding off it and spoiling the party. One thing I was going to say, I'm really excited for the walkouts because we've seen Moreno walk out. He's you know, a nice guy and all that outside of the cage. But when he walks out, you know, you can see it in his eyes, assassin baby. But also in your last few walkouts, especially in the Askarov one, when you walked out, the intensity that you had in your eyes, you could see that, you know, it was game time, but that's not something that we saw earlier on in your career. Yeah, I feel like it's something that I've had to I guess, um, learn through experience what works best for me and what I have to tap into. And 
that's me just tapping into my Māori mentality and that's my history, that's my ancestors, that's just in me, that's in my blood that we're built from warriors and being Māori and representing Aotearoa New Zealand on this world stage, uh, I channel all of it. I know everyone back home is watching and supporting and I, and I feed off that. So when I'm walking out to hostile territory where everyone's against me, I'm walking out to my walkout song which is Poya, it just reminds me why I'm doing this, who I'm representing, and this brings me back to prison. When I'm in there, I've got to respect everything that I put into this, and um, he's trying to take it, take away everything that I want, and that's to be the world champion. So Brandon Moreno will definitely feel my presence when I'm in the ring, and I won't take a back step. He'll feel the fire, and when I land the target, I'll put him away. How was this training camp? This training camp's been long. It's definitely... Um, you last fought in match. March on my birthday, March 26th. So I haven't really stopped training since that fight. I knew a title fight was coming, so I just stayed in the gym, stayed ready, and um, eventually we, we got the call. So I've been preparing for the last nine weeks, um, pretty much doing everything I possibly can. If that's not um, in, in these four wars at City Kickboxing, that's doing other things, you know, running, strength and conditioning. Uh, so after sparring on a Saturday, just a little push, we run up Mount Eden. So if, if people that live in Auckland. Push. That's not a little push. <laughs> so if people that live in Auckland, that's a big hill, but we just do that as a finisher. And um, Eugene didn't tell me to do that. I just stood it, um, put it on myself and I told the boys, um, come if you want. I'm here to um, you know, push myself. And if I can get an edge and, and um, tickle the boxes. And that's not just meaning training, that means recovery. You know, I don't go to sleep until I, I make sure I'm doing everything. You know, that means mobility, stretching, um, sauna, recovery, ice baths. That's when I go to bed, when everything's set up for the next day, so. You were talking about uh, your recovery and how seriously you take that as well. When you train, do you also monitor your data, like your vitals, heart rate, oxygen saturation? Are you like a real science guy too and you like to track it, let's say, 12 weeks out, eight weeks out, and you look at that data data, and you adjust? Yeah, definitely, I, I have what do you use? my heart rate monitor. I just use a Polar, Polar Beat on my app. So I send that information to Geordie, my nutritionist. I send it to Makoto, who's another um, strength and conditioning coach, as well as Suns, uh, my, my own strength and conditioning coaches. And they collectively see what I'm doing, the output, see what I'm putting back into my body. And then we're just trying to uh, maximize it. We're trying to get to that 1% better. I just feel like I'm on another level and you're just evolving off the sport, you know, and you've got to keep adapting, keep adding new things and um, yeah, keep pushing. And, and it's not about just taking away from what you're doing, it's about putting back into it, which means like, how are you sleeping? If you can sleep better, what can you do before bed? Um, what you're putting into your body, and that's not just nutrition wise, that means mentally, like, what are you reading? Are you um, are you feeding yourself the right uh, the right things? You know, manifesting. I, I trust the process. I know um, what we're doing in the gym um, breeds champions. And um, like I said before, I don't take any shortcuts. So when it's fight week, my weight's good right now. Um, so I, I made sure I came and dialed in for this fight. Um, and Jordy will be over there in, in Dallas with us. So normal routine for us. Um, we know what works and we know the system. So yeah, it's just about fine tuning. I bought myself a suit. So for the press conference, you know, I want to look good, feel good. I want to make sure I'm coming in feeling like the world champ and that's what I'm doing. So my family will be over there. I know I have a lot of support back home. Obviously I'm documenting this whole trip as well. And it's awesome that TVNZ are, um, are behind this and my friend Crystal's um, the producer. So it's cool doing all these little things outside of the actual fight camp. And then I've just dropped my own clothing line as well with you know, um, with my brand KKF, which is my initials. I'm into clothing and you know, it is an extension of your personality. So the response has been really positive saying, oh, the material is so nice and premium and just feels luxury. And that's what we were going for. We didn't want to be another fight wear shirt or support a tee. You know, we wanted to get away from that and have something that you would wear all year round, not just on fight week to support your um, favorite fighter. So, you know, this is life after fighting what we're doing now. and. It's all about setting yourself up. So, you know, obviously the world, the world title was the priority. Being a UFC fighter, being a UFC world champion is um, what I'm here to do. But obviously you need, you need to diversify um, your other options as well. This is the second rematch of your career. I believe it's the first at this level of, of competition. How many times have you rewatched the first fight? I don't really go back and um, Watch, 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 watch too much of my film. Obviously, I have watched it a few times. You know, I'm not the same guy that last fought Brandon Moreno. This was 2019 we last fought. This was at T-Mobile in the early prelims. Like, there was probably 5,000 people, if that, in the crowd, because no one really comes to the prelims. 
finest three rounds in the UFC flyweight division. There's a lot of positives I can take away from that. I did find my targets early. Oh! Beautiful right hand by Tyron France. We definitely won that first round. I dropped him twice. Moreno with a nice high kick block by Tyron France. Yeah, he did well to adjust. Second round, you know, started kicking my arms and and taking away that power. Tyron France just doesn't have the pop that he had in that first. And then third round, he edged a decision. It was a close fight. So there's a lot of positives, a lot of things I've had to work on, and um, that's what I've done. I've, I've worked on those holes. So now that we're running it back, fighting for five rounds, um, I feel like we've got a great game plan in place, and um, I've gained more experience, and um, I'm just in a different place. So a few years let down the track, obviously he's gone on to win the title, and I've gone on to get on a three-fight win streak against the best guys in the world. And um, he's coming off a loss. He's been fighting the same guy for the last two years. And I've, I've been getting different looks. So even though it's a rematch, we're different people. I'm in different places in my life. And um, I'm just on another level. After having that first close fight with Moreno and watching him go on to become a champion, was that just more affirmation and confidence for you, knowing that you know that guy's a champion? I was this close to beating him. Yeah, exactly. That that's um, definitely what I was thinking. It just reassured the journey that I'm on, and I'm, I'm right there with the best guys in the world. So I just started to believe it. I started to believe that um, what I did to him in, in that first fight. If we ever fought again, I would be able to get the job done. So, Do you feel that pressure is going to be a huge factor in this rematch? Pressure as in like whoever's going forward. Like whoever on, is on the back foot is most likely not going to be doing so well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like he's going to put the pace, try to put the pace on me, um, but I'm going to meet him in the middle. I'm going to do a Max Holloway point to the ground and then see if he's going to oblige. I'm not taking a back step and um, if he wants to um, swing, then so be it, I'll turn this into a dog fight. I feel like this fight, we'll, we will mix it up. And I'll, I'll, I'll welcome it. I want him to try wrestle me. I want him to try get me to the ground. Um, I welcome it as well. I'll, I'll try um, get him to the ground and out scramble him. I just showed it in my last fight. I can out scramble these wrestlers, these um, grapplers. So um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried. And obviously I've, I've been training hard and I feel like who wants it more will be the deciding factor. He doesn't want it more than I do. How's that feel? Feels like uh, it's destiny. Like 10-week fight camp, 10-year fight camp, born for this. Have you done much visualisation on the whole moment, you know, the walkout, the weigh-ins or...? Yeah, definitely. I, I visualise it all the time. Um, me walking up to the scale, then looking across to Brandon and then doing a poo kind of right in his face and making him feel my presence. Just a taste of what's to come fight night. And then we'll, when I make the walk up on fight night, when the camera's following me, not just from the curtains, but from the locker room, and you're seeing the build up and you're hearing the music foyer. And I can just feel everyone at back home watching and supporting me. And I'm just channeling all that energy from my ancestors, my two pointer. And um, he'll feel that once I get in there and he realizes that this isn't the same guy that fought in 2019. just on another level. He'll be shocked, he'll be surprised, and then once he's surprised, then I'll put him away. Oh, that's it. Front has done it. And it's all said and done, no one can deny me that I, I'm the best, and I'm just gonna go out there and just put on a show, put on a clinic, and, and um, bring this world title back home.